Good evening and welcome to tea time. so glad you're joining me tonight. I'm going to talk about my weekend and get to my in-studio guest. Um, Friday night, I did Murdered by the Mob in Manhattan. We have a pic of that. Um, it is, that is that is me as a blonde and Ralph Bracco. Um, I did my, it was my debut as Bunny, the big boss Johnny's wife. And uh, I'm, I was very excited to play her for the first time and everything went well, thank God, and I had a really good time. So that was uh, Friday night at the Iron Bar in Manhattan. And if you want to see Murdered by the Mob, you can go to MurderedByTheMob.com for all upcoming shows. We're going to be there again on October 13th. And we're going to be in Bayside at Bourbon Street on October 27th. Um, Saturday, I stayed in because of Hurricane Ophelia. And Sunday, you know, you know, it's laundry day. And I spent um, the day with my mother in Queens. So I just want to mention a couple of things. Rescuing families is having a sale. There it is, October 14th. So if you get a chance to come to Franklin Square to shop, all the proceeds, um, Rescuing Families is a nonprofit, and they renovate homes for people with disabilities. So it's really cool. Come shop to your drop. You know, the money goes to a great cause. And if you're going to be in the Lindenhurst area, NYLIF, New York Long Island Film Festival, Saturday, October 21st, you could come see me in a rom-com comedy called It's Love Bro. That's me with my on-screen husband, Frank Fiella. It is hysterical, so I hope everyone comes to see it. Um, I'm also in something called Graveyard Medium, which is a short and um, you can look that up too. Just go to my page and you can find out where everything is. All right, also let me get to my guest because I'm excited. He's an actor, he's a writer, he's a musician, he's a friend. Anthony Avini is here with me. Hi, Anthony. The correct pronunciation is Avani. Avani, Avani. Okay. Thank you for How correcting you me. Avani. Everyone says Avini. Well, Avani. Are they Americanize it? Yeah, exactly. Avani, Avani. Nowadays, Aveni. it seems like everything is becoming Americanized. <laughs> even the fight between gravy and tomato sauce. Oh yeah, yeah. And I always tell everybody, listen. <laughs> It's tomato sauce. The only people who call it gravy are Americans and right, foreigners right. who wish they were Italian. <laughs> and furthermore, I will challenge anyone. Yeah. If you go to any really true Italian pizzeria or restaurant, yes. you will never find the word gravy on their menu. If you do, I'll buy you dinner there. <laughs> Speaking about restaurants, actually, you owned your own pizzeria did, restaurant, yes. didn't you? Yes. It, it was, you know... My grandfather had restaurants, my father had restaurants, and I got into the business as well. Yeah. It's a very difficult business. Oh, yeah. It's hard yeah. to find good helpers. Yes, it is. And not only that, but you need people that are trustworthy. Yeah. And that know how to treat the customers with respect yeah. and a smile and yeah. appreciation. Absolutely. You know? I totally agree with you. Well, hello, Bruno and Anne and everyone for watching Tea Time. I appreciate it. Please like the show. Please share it. Um, but I want everyone to get to know you, my friend. You actually you grew up in Queens. Queens, yeah. Where exactly in well, Queens? Well, I actually grew up in a lot of the boroughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents moved around a lot, but me and my sisters always managed to find them. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, basically, um, Brooklyn, when my, my family first Brooklyn. migrated. Oh, Brooklyn! Brooklyn! Yeah. When my family first came here from Sicily, yeah. they started in Brooklyn. Right. And then uh, we moved to Staten Island. Staten Italy. Yes, <laughs> Staten Italy, baby. And uh, then we ended up in Queens. Yeah. And then over the course of the years, I've lived in Florida, yeah. Hawaii, California. I got around a lot. Wow. And, uh, so where'd you go to high school? I went to high school in Bayside. Oh, which yeah. one? Because that's where I... That's where I grew up, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, a lot of my friends went to Bayside High, but I actually went to Cardozo. Oh, that wasn't too far away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They either Good went school. to Franny Lou, Bayside. Yeah. Uh, Bayside Cardozo. High School had a beautiful swimming pool in there. I oh, know. Yeah. I was so nice. jealous. Yeah. And a football team, which we never yeah, had. Yeah. We didn't have a swimming pool or a football team. Yeah, I was on the wrestling team over there. Were you really? Yeah. Well, yeah. how cool is that? Yeah. Well, I was a very athletic guy when I was much younger. Yeah. I'm still very athletic. You are? Yeah. You're in very, very yeah. good shape. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I try, you know. <laughs> It's part of owning a home. You always got something to do. I know. Whether it's landscaping, know. cement work, or it's painting, true. you're always it's doing it's something. It's true. My mother said a house is like a sponge. It always yeah. needs, you know, it And I've been doing something. construction my whole life on and off, besides the restaurant business. Right. Know? But the restaurant business went, my landlord got so greedy, he decided to double my rent. And at that point, oh. I said, you know what? I had enough of this business anyway, yeah. between trying to find the right helpers and right. too many hours. Yeah. Luckily, I knew construction. Right. And, you know, I had the music industry. Yeah, I've been a yeah. singer my whole life. Yeah. Always the lead singer of all my bands. Amazing. And, uh, well, we're going to talk about that in a little while, but I want to get to you being in this movie industry. You've been in this movie industry 30 years, and your first movie was actually a Bronx Tale. Yes. And we have a pic of you and De Niro oh, yeah. back then. That was 30 years ago, a Bronx Tale. Is that crazy? Look how much hair I had. <laughs> 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 and then the next pick is you with Chaz. Oh, yeah. And what's crazy is that the next pick is you and Chaz 30 years later. That's right. We got reunited again thanks to a good friend of mine, William DeMeo. William DeMeo. The, Shout out to Willie. The creator of the Gravesend TV series, yes. which can be seen And there he is. He's on Amazon. He's, he's an actor. He's a writer. He's a producer. That's he's a director. Right. Actually, I'm going to get Willie on my show. He said he'll do it. Okay. We just have to pick a date but, but speaking good, about good person, speaking right, about Willie person. you did a lot you did a lot of things with with Willie a lot oh, of yeah, stuff yeah. with Willie but you and I you and I met you and I met on a bunch of sets too we worked together a few times we were on um, um, uh, the Wizards books the Wizards books which is now out on you, uh, YouTube TV yeah and Tubi channel I believe just came out today free cool the Wizards book. Yeah, and we were on. Um, well, you were playing the part of a wicked witch, if I, I was. Remember. I was a witch with an English accent. Ah, <laughs> with a gray wig. Yes, on. and we, we did Gravesend together because we filmed the uh, Fourth of July party together. That's right. That was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. We also did um, Good Friday with Good Sal Friday, Rinella. right? And Which is so uh, hopefully coming out soon. I hope so. It's been a lot of years in the making. Yeah, but as you COVID. Know, COVID kind of messed everything up. COVID, and not only that, but a lot of people don't realize when you're making an independent movie, it's hard to get funding. Fazul. Yeah, the Fazul. Right. We know and that. And number two, it's a period piece from like the late 60s, early 70s. Yes. So that makes it really hard because you got to have the right. Well, props. talking about period pieces, we're going to go to a pick of your cars. Okay. And I, we're going to leave that up for a quick second. But yeah. You own how many cars? I own 30 cars in my personal collection. Okay, yeah. and they use some of those cars in a Bronx Tale, correct? Oh, yeah, we used uh, 10 or 12 of them in the Bronx Tale. Wow. And, uh, you know, over the course of the years, I'd be like, hey, this is pretty good, you know? Yeah, it's I almost get... like its own business within itself, right? right? Because, like, I try to go Thank after you. acting jobs. The, where they actually need old school cars yes. so that I could get double And you could pay. say, hey, by the way, right. I've got a car. Exactly. And I've got more than one. Right. And not only that, but technically, yes. I have 200 cars available because all my friends and people that I know. Yeah. So if they need any particular cars on a set. You make a call. And I don't personally have it in my collection. Right. I make phone calls. Right. And I make it happen. Now, what's the oldest car you own? My oldest is a 1956 Chevy Nomad. Nice. It's aqua with ivory. Really nice. beautiful car. It took me 10 years to restore it, but I got it finished. Wow. Yeah. I mean, do you, is that like your baby? Is that like your fave? Uh, well, 
It is one of my favorites, but I have a tendency of favoring my convertibles. Mm. You know, it's nice cruising around in the summer. Because I love, I mean, I talked about this before, I love old cars. Like, I love, like, a Bel Air 57 Chevy. I love white wall tires. I love okay. chrome. Chrome. Give oh, me yeah. chrome. I mean, these cars, they're artwork. They are artwork. Well, compared to the new cars, which are made of plastic. Oh, yeah, no. You the can't smallest compare. little bump, and you have a dent. I know. You know? They, they were tanks back yeah. then. Yeah. Tanks. I know. So where do you, I mean, where do you store 30 cars? Well, luckily, I have a nice storage spot Okay, in my house, all right, yeah. And I rent a couple of garages, yeah. which are extremely expensive nowadays. Oh, sure. Um, I've been downsizing. i got to downsize yeah. my fleet. And you have to, do you, like, keep them, like, like Jay... Leno, like on display, do, are they on lifts? Do you keep them covered? I mean, how do you keep up with them and make sure they're like, you know. It's a lot harder they're than They're babies. It's like babies. That's right. Because they always need something. Yes. Tires, brakes, uh, you know, a window don't go down, an yeah, electrical problem yeah. inside. But luckily, I've been doing mechanic work See, most of my life. That's great. And I do all my own construction. Right. All, all right. my own car mechanics. That's good. Because otherwise, you just get ripped off out there. Yeah. yeah. Bruno says, wow, what a collection, Anthony. Who's that? Bruno who? Coppola. Bruno, Bruno Coppola. Bruno Coppola. Yeah. All right. So How I you want... doing, Bruno? <laughs> so um, I want to go through some stuff that you've done. I mean, you've done a lot of things over the years and 30 years. You've got some major creds going on. And like we said, Bronx Tale was your first movie. You've done a lot since then. Yes. Now, IMDb only goes back to like 2010. But you did a lot of short films yes and you did a lot of indies you did tv series you've done a lot of stuff you did something called um back in 2013 you did something called quick to duck actually with steve gutenberg oh yeah quick to duck yeah do you remember that we're yeah, gonna go down was, memory uh, lane a little bit robin mountjoy look see how you remember yeah yeah that, i can't remember director. what i had for breakfast this morning look how you yeah. remember i actually got him a location for the scene too um in College Point in a bar. Uh -huh. A lady friend of mine used to own a bar over there. And yeah. We got the scene filmed in there. It was it came That's out good. Great. And I got him a couple of good vehicles, too. Uh -huh. A 1949 pickup truck, which is involved in there. Oh. And he loved it. We filmed a scene at the football, scene, nice. uh, football stadium with that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then you did, just to go down a little bit, you also did, um, you know, like I said, a lot of shorts. You you've even did a... a did a video, but you did something in 2015 called Laugh, Killer, Laugh. Oh, yeah. And that was with Gino Caffarelli, That's who correct. I've worked with, Tom Sizemore, yes. correct, and William, William Forsythe, Forsythe, which we have a pic of you and William oh, yeah. that we could put that one up. Hello? Okay. Oh, there yeah, we go. There we William. go. Oh, we got a little facial hair going on over there. <laughs> yeah. He's great. I actually met him a couple of years ago at MobCon. What a sweetheart yeah. of a guy. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Thank you. Yeah, we hung out and then quite we, often after yeah. that movie film. And he's in Grey's End. Yes, he is. He's one of the new cast members in season two. Yes. And, uh, he, you know, he's very dependable, always on point. His acting is phenomenal. Yeah. As his father as well. Oh, yeah. John yeah, definitely, definitely. Top notch in my book. Top notch. You did Saturday in the Park back in 2016 with our friend Chuck Zito. Oh, yeah. And Anthony Mangano. Oh, yes, yes. And yes. you work with Anthony more than once also. Mm -hmm. um, the and list Chuck Zito is actually in, in Gravesend. Gravesend as well. Yeah. Who now, is it? Now that I think of it, <laughs> I have actually been in probably like six or seven movies with Chuck. Really? One of the first times I met him yeah. was in the remake of The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Oh, cool. And we were filming a scene where the ambulance comes off the highway on Park Avenue by the United Nations yes, building. Yes, yes. And there's an underground roadway there. And this ambulance comes and hits a police car. The police car tumbles over and falls down under the roadway. Wow. And they had to film this scene like five, six times in order to get it right. Wow. And in one particular take... The front bumper of the police car came flying off like a helicopter blade and came right towards me and Chuck. We had to actually duck for oh our lives. Oh, my God. For that's real. scary. Yeah. Um, another take, the police car went out of control, hit the fire hydrant, and it was like a TV cartoon. and all the water started coming up. Wow. <laughs> it was really, really intense. That is intense. That's yeah. crazy. And uh, now we worked together recently in uh, Gravesend. Yes. The TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and Chuck pulls up in my 1956 Chevy Nomad. Nice. And he takes on five guys in a fight scene. I'm not going to tell you what <laughs> no, happens because I don't want to it. blow it. It's on Amazon Prime. You can watch it right now. That's right. And then you did um, um, uh, The Right to Live with Michael Voigt. Oh, yeah. You did Michelle so many Franticos. things. Yes. And you did Mi, Mi Familia, which was with Joseph Manera. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, and then we worked together with him again on The Wizard's the Box. The Wizard's Book, yeah. It's nice when you work with the same people, you know. Sure, because you get the chemistry well, going. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. Then you did Breaking Point, and that was with Willie DeMeo and Joe D'Onofrio, right. mm -hmm. our friend. Oh, yeah. And you did The Legend of Joey Fox with John Marola, oh, who I've yes. had on the show yes. also. And speaking of Mr. Mr. John Marola. Yes. John and I go back many years as well. We've worked in the Gotti movie and a whole bunch of other projects. And he is making his own movie called The Bensoners Boys. The Bensoners Boys. Boys. That's the other one we did yes. together. <laughs> That's right. So in the past couple of years. We worked together a lot. Right. But it's cool. Yes. It's so, it's so much. Well, you're fun. a very talented woman, and you're a very talented oh, thank man. You. Thank you. You really are, Anthony. You. You're great. I mean, his music is fantastic, which we're going to talk about in a little while. But we're going to take my first commercial break, and we come back. We're going to continue with this laundry list and plethora of everyone he's worked with. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. Well, hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun, and that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. <laughs> Great day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I have my friend who's very talented, Anthony Aveni. I say it right? Aveni. Yes, I did. And he's an actor. He's a writer. He is also a musician. He started out 30 years ago in a Bronx Tale. And ever since then, his career has been steady, streaming, and very interesting. He's worked with so many wonderful people in the industry. And we're going to get to Bound by Debt, which actually Nikki Silva was in. And I had Nikki on my show last week, and we talked about it. Because right. you chimed in. You're like, I did. I sure did. Yeah, debt with when her. I heard Nikki Silva, I said, oh, she's a very talented lady. She is. And very punctual. And yeah, she's great, isn't she? Oh, yeah. And, we, and then you did, in 2019, you did Tapestry, which was with Stephen Baldwin. And we have a pick of you. Yes. With uh, with Stephen mm -hmm. and wow. no, nope, that is Bert. That's well, Bert, well, Young. Bert Young was in it He's too. He's in it as well. You yes. Can, I was gonna say you can leave Bert. 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 There's Bert Young. Bert That's was right. in Tapestry with you. Yes. yes. Along with I've them. worked with Bert several times actually. Like yes, Tapestry, you have. And I believe he was in the Brawler with us. Yes, the Brawler, which yeah. was a great, great yeah. movie. All right, if you can't find it, it's there somewhere. But don't worry about uh -huh. it. Aha! That was uh, Joey Pantoliano. Yeah, got, yeah, that's. That's Joey. That was in the brawler. You, all, right. I, all right. So the brawler is next. So leave that there because you <laughs> did the brawler. And my friend, um, uh, um, oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. Isn't that horrible? Ken Kushner. Oh my God. Yeah. Name the pe name everybody. Yeah, yeah. Name everybody. And oh, by the way, the brawler is on Netflix, and you can watch it. I watch it. It's amazing. You have Joey Pant is in that. Burt Young is in that. Greg Criticos. Zach. My friend is in that. Right. Greg, right? Okay. Zach McGowan was one yes. of the stars. He yes. was a fighter. Yes. A lot of great people. And also Anthony Magnano also plays John Tra uh, Sylvester Stallone. That's right. And he does an amazing he job. He sure does. He's amazing a good person, job. man. He's and, Anthony's good people. And, um, and I'm still having a brain fart. Um, help me out. Help me out. Who played Andre the Giant? Oh, my friend James Thank the John you, James. Bonavilla. James, forgive me. 
your, your name your name was on the tip of my tongue and I couldn't get it out. James is amazing. I love him. He's yeah. been on my show and he did a great job as He's Andre a good the Giant. Person. Very talented actor. And you did and a I loved you in the brawler. Oh, you, you were thank great. You. Thank you had a big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you were good. We no, had you some were really fun good. Scenes. It was I had a some it was a scenes. great it was a great scene. And then the, the, the disco, the club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What an influence you oh, are yeah. on him. Let me tell you, the brawler is a great I was feeding him. <laughs> the brawler is a great it's a true story. It's based on um, Chuck Webner, Chuck Webner, the heavyweight fighter. Yes, and he was also known as the Bayonne Bleeder. Yes, he was one of the only guys to really ever get Muhammad Ali down on the canvas. On the ground, nobody gave him a fair chance to win. They it's all true. thought it was going to be it's over true. in two rounds. Yeah, but he went all sixteen rounds. Yeah, yeah, he did. And he got Muhammad Ali and, and, down. And the thing is, is that Sylvester Stallone based Rocky on his life. It was his inspiration. That's true. Who, that, that inspired Sylvester Stallone and and Chuck ends up taking suing. him to court and suing him I and mean. well uh, it was an undisclosed amount. Did you? I never said in the movie what it was. It says it was an undisclosed yeah. amount. But you have to watch The Brawler. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. It's on Netflix. It's all over. Just look it up. It's a great, great and you did yeah. a great uh, job in it. Because so I'm watching it and we're going, this <laughs> I love when I see my friends in movies. I know, me too. Don't you I get excited? Up, yeah. It really does. I scream out loud and I say, oh shit. My Joe DeBerry's watching. Hello, Joe. Joe. Um, Hello. So listen, so you also did um, Mi Familia 2 with Joseph Manera and a bunch of shorts, a bunch of shorts. You, you've done so many, many things. But like I said before, we worked on Good Friday together, Wizards Books, Graves and Bentoners Boys. With Willie, you did Breaking, Breaking Point, you did Mafia, uh, Mafia Comedy, you did Back in the Day, you did Gotti. We got a picture Gotti, of you oh, yeah. with Travolta, baby. That's oh right. my God. All right. Wait, because I just like died and went to heaven. I have a picture of me kissing the Gotti poster, okay? <laughs> Which we're not posting, but. Well, I've got to tell you a funny story. Tell me story. about that because John came to Brooklyn through uh, through Willie. Willie got John to come to Brooklyn. That's correct. And it was crazy. Yeah. We had a big party over by the pizzeria, by Lenny's. Yes. We recreated that one slice that on scene. top of another. Yes, I from know. From the Saturday night. I know. <laughs> So the funniest thing is we were working on the Gotti movie. Right. And uh, we were in the holding area. So I had to go use the men's room. Okay. So that's why I say we met in the strangest place. <laughs> so I'm in, the, I'm in the men's room. Yeah. I come out. All of a sudden my phone rings. I put it on speaker. I'm washing my hands. Uh-huh. And as I'm talking on the phone, Mr. Travolta comes in the men's room. So right. I said, hey, brother, I got to hang up. John Travolta <laughs> just walked. Walked in the men's room. Hey, I did get to meet him when we were doing the recreation of a Pelham 123 remake. Right. And he remembered me from then. So when he came in the room, I go, Johnny, how are you? Remember me? The taking of Pelham 123. He goes, yeah, Anthony, how you doing? Oh, that's sweet. So here we are. Just before John came in, another friend of mine, Dominic, came in to use the men's room. Yes. So when he heard me saying, yeah, oh, I got to hang up, John Travolta walked in the men's room. My friend Dominic from the <laughs> store goes, yeah, right, Anthony, sure. <laughs> and I go, no, for real. Oh, my God. So I'm talking to John. John's yeah. doing his business. So then my friend comes out. He goes, I will shake your hand, but I think I should wash them Yeah, first. right? <laughs> oh, my God, that is so So uh, then he goes, we're chatting in the men's room for like a minute. Yeah. And my friend's like, hey, can we get a picture? And John says, no, not in the men's room. No. Come with me. Yeah. And he goes, but come to my private That's holding a great, area. It's a great pick. Great pick. Come to my private yeah. Holding area because yeah. otherwise everyone's going to want to yeah, take yeah, a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how we got the picture. That's and awesome. it's private holding area. Selfie shot. Look at that. I love it. I love it. I had a beard it. going because I was getting ready to work on another movie another project film. for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So I always like to get in character oh, absolutely. when I'm starting a new project, yeah, yeah. whether it's a homeless man or biker. Well, we, got a, we got a couple of pics of yeah. you, I think, in a uniform. Oh, yeah. Um, Yep, that's you. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. I was playing a role. And then the homeless. The that's homeless. the grievance group movie. And then there you are. That's the vagrant. The vagrant yeah. with Tony Farrow. Please, miss, can you spare a dollar for some food? Oh. Please. Oh, look at you. Look at you here. Where was Over that? there, that's a, that's a very good movie. It's called The Curse. Uh-huh. Um, Michael Wright. 
Yes. From the uh, the singer from The Temptations is in yeah. that project. I play the part of a police officer. Wow. I'm a crooked cop. You yeah, are? You're probably going to hate mm. me. But <laughs> Remember, it's only a movie, <laughs> folks. Oh, that's you. Michael. Oh, yeah, Michael Madsen. Aww. That's a movie. Movie called Back in the Day. A lot of talented yes, actors. Yes, Back in Day. Willie, yeah. Willie. Yeah. Um, oh, you and Paul. Paul Savino. What a sweetheart. Sweet he guy. Was. I actually Rest met him. Peace, I actually met him back in the eighties. Wow. I won a couple of tickets. Um, I think for KTU or something, and I had to go to the city to pick him up. And he was actually there, and I met him, and he was so sweet. We didn't have cameras back then, but he actually signed something for me. Wow. And then I saw him a few years ago at MobCon, SopranoCon in AC. Yeah. Oh yeah. And what a sweet, sweet, sweet man. His daughter, by the way, is going to be uh, Mira. Is going to be on Dancing with the Stars. Oh She's doing yeah. Doing Dancing with the Stars. I heard so, about that. Yeah. So you can watch her on that. Yeah. And then you know when we when I, we were working on um, yeah, uh, that was. That movie was uh, called Back. Wait, no, no, Brooklyn Banker. Oh, Brooklyn Banker! That's, I've got that's that. That's how. Yeah, that's. Yes. That was that photo with me, Savino. Brooklyn and Banker. We were hanging out all day. Singer. Um, oh, he's an amazing. Excellent singer. storyteller, and he had the ability to. Um, have different kinds of accents, Jamaican accent, really? Spanish, and he was singing in different languages. Brooklyn Banker, I have it here. That was with Paul Sorvino. Yep. Frederico, we directed, put up a picture of Frederico. That's right. Directed by Federico Castelluccio. Oh, he directed it? He played Furio from The Sopranos. I, I Yes, he was in Sopranos, but I didn't know he directed it. Not only is he an amazing actor and director, but... The man is an incredible artist. artist. I oh know. my God, Federico! I gotta get him on my show. Yeah, oh, gotta he, get him on my show. And then, he's a sweetheart. And Artie Pasquale was in that too. Artie, Artie Pasquale. Pasquale is another friend of mine. I love he's Artie. Good. There he is. Yeah. There's Federico. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my. I heard he's a, he's, a, he's a sweetheart. Of well, next time I know I'm going to be at an event with him, I'm going to be oh, sure to call you oh, and invite and you his, as my personal I love guest. his artwork. Oh, oh yeah. my God. He's been posting it. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Incre that's a God-given talent. Yeah. Oh, Let me tell God. I can't draw a stick figure. I can't even draw a stick <laughs> figures either. <so. laughs> oh, my gosh. And then you did... Um, a lot of other things. Again, you did Escape Artist, which 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 was a short. Um, oh recently, yeah, we've been winning a lot of festivals with yes. that. And Ralph Rocco is in that. Yes, yeah. Ralph. Shout out to Ralph Rocco. Yeah, I'm he's gonna... also with us on uh, the Bensonhurst yes, Boys yes, movie. Yes, he yeah. is. And then you also did um, recently um, a little girl who who reads. Oh yeah, that was with uh, Lindsay uh, Farley. Mm hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing, yeah. like just amazing. It really That's gonna is. That's going to be coming out soon. So again, um, what kind of? I mean, you've played so many characters, and I just want to give a shout out also. Bensonhurst Boys and Gravesend. We have um, Anthony Magano Mag on on both of those, along with Gary Pastor, who is another That's another right. one of my faves. I just I can watch him all day, all night act. The man is a genius when it comes to acting. Do you remember that night when we were filming in the restaurant? It was an overnight. Oh, my God. Hello. That was, <laughs> was like, a, it was, it was we a, did like 14 hours. Yeah, it was a long, yeah. long, long day. But we got a lot of footage. We did. We captured we did. some very it's important footage. It's the pilot. We filmed the pilot yeah. for Bensonhurst Boys, and, and, and there's like seven other episodes, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting it done, but it will it will get done. John Marola said it's going to get done, so I know it's going to get oh, done. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's and amazing. he's a dedicated person. I know he's going to get it done the right oh, way. Oh, yeah, also. absolutely. And then you did, um, so we talked about the vagrant, and we put up the pic of you as a homeless guy, and that was with, again, Tony Ferro. And that has gotten a lot of attention as well. Oh, yeah. And that's, it was Anjanette, right? Anjanette Pinkston, yep. yep. And then, She's um, an excellent director and uh, writer. Yes. I just recently worked with her on another project yeah, I called get her Black on the show. and White. Yes, and okay. And it was a very controversial uh script okay because it has a lot of like racist kind of things in it yeah you know yeah, and yeah. a lot of actors well a lot of people try to steer away from that a lot of people won't stuff. go there but i have to tell you the vagrant also listed patrick forsett in that 
Did you work with Patrick on the? No. Unless that's an IMDb. I got to double check that, but he's on there. And then you did The Good Samaritan with Angel Salazar. Oh, yes. And Artie, that was with Artie also. Artie Pasquale's in there as well. <laughs> All right, yeah. so Artie said he's going to do my show. And, you know, he lives in Jersey. And he's like, yeah, can we do it virtually? I'm like, I want your tush next to my tush. Mr. Pasquale. So we got to get, I got to get him here before it starts snowing and the weather gets bad. <laughs> yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? I know Joe DeBarry said, I'll take a ride with him. I'll take a ride with him. Whatever. I just, I just want. Well, next, one thing's for sure. Artie Pasquale's word is like gold. No, he's at, he's awesome. He's Very amazing. Very reliable. And he's in Bensonhurst Boys too. Super, super yeah, genuine Yeah, he person. is a sweetheart, a sweetheart of a guy. In pre, um, you have Destinies, which you, which you did with the, Al Sapienza, who also said he's going to come on my show, yeah. and Louis Venario, oh, yeah. who, Venaria, who I also had on my show. Right. So Destinies is Nick Christopher's. Nick Christopher's project, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Louis Venaria, we worked together on so many movies. Oh, my gosh. Six He's in Grey's End, Bronx Tale. Yeah. Bronx Tale. That was our first time ever meeting. Yeah. I knew all the guys, Joseph D'Onofrio. Yeah. From that I was on set almost And, you know, and, and, and doing other movies with, like, Willie and Joe and Louis, it's like it's like a reunion. Yes. Every time you, you know, you work. Yeah. And we're all, like, part, you know, we're part of the same family yeah. at this point. It's a know? crew. Yeah. You got your own crew. That's right. <laughs> The chemistry is excellent because we know each other very yes. well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it helps when you're doing some projects, you know, a lot of the directors, they'll give you green light if they know you're good at improvisation. Yeah. Like, um, like play with it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like, uh, I love that, though. I love free reign. When I worked with uh, Ken Kushner uh -huh. on the Tapestry movie. Right. I had a lot of tongue twisters in that one. Yeah. And I was working with Stephen Baldwin. Yeah. Opposite of Stephen. Right. And I said to Ken... When I showed up to the set, I said, Ken, you realize all the tongue twisters I had to learn here? Yeah. This was one of the hardest scripts I had to study. Right. And he said, please, Avani, tell me you studied. I said, of course I did. Yeah. I says, but let me ask you something. Yeah. I have some creative stuff I would like to maybe add in there. Mm. He said, please, Avani, tell me you studied. I, I did. <laughs> He goes, all right, I'll let everyone know that you have excellent improvisation skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want you to deliver word for word by the script first. Right. And also confer with Stephen Baldwin and see if he's okay with it. Right, if he's so open to it. So I said to Stephen, I go, Stephen, I know my lines are tongue twisters. How do you find your lines? He goes, mine are tongue twisters also. I right. said, well... Ken Kushner just gave us green light to do some improv. Okay, cool. But he wants us to do word for word by first. the script first. Yes, normally that's what they want. And then do a little improv. Mm -hmm. So Ken told everybody, okay, we got two improvisation masters here. So they're going to deliver the dialogue word for word by the script first. Right. Then we're going to let them do some improv. Nice. After we did the improv... Ken Kushner, the director, <laughs> and the writer, yeah. everybody stood up and clapped, and the director said, that was excellent, Avani. Ah! <laughs> I was so proud. Oh, my God, that's great. I was great. playing the part of the character of Worm. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good event. Wow. Yeah. So that that was is so story. cool. That. That's amazing. And you know what's amazing? i got to take my second break. So don't go away. More with Anthony when we come back. <laughs> One woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making. And to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. No, How you I doing? It's Sal the Voice Valentinetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Canis Tracy Tea Time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. And make sure you, you you follow Teresa on Facebook, Tea Time with Teresa Canis Tracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love
Fantastic. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. Salva Voice Valentinetti. He did my show, oh my God, five years ago. I'm trying to get him back. The man is very busy. So here it is. Salvatore, I need you back on my show. It's been so long. Let's promote your upcoming shows. Let's get you here. I know you're fading away. You're like down to nothing now. But I want you back on my show, Sal. So... Give me a call. Let's set something up on a Monday night. I am here with actor, writer, and musician Anthony Avani. Um, we talked a lot about what he's done, who he's uh, acted with. Uh, are there any other pictures we didn't put up yet? Maybe. I don't know. I gave him a whole bunch. Up oh, you. With <laughs> you could see what a great time we're I having. I know. Look at what Michael Madison was doing your, behind my you, back. He's giving you bunny ears <laughs> behind me the your horns. back. <laughs> we put up pretty much everybody, right? I just wanted to make sure we didn't leave anyone out. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, also, um, before we get into music, because you are a fabulous singer. Thank you so much. A great much. musician. Um, let's talk about two other things. I know we mentioned Gravesend, but Cruise by my friend, your friend, Gino Caffarelli, was originally called Franny Lou, mm -hmm. and then it was changed to Cruise, and it's it's four years ago already Wow! that that movie was uh, released. We were, I was at the release party. Were you there yeah. on Franny yeah. Lou? Yeah. We were there. I was there. And uh, so Gino Caffarelli, I actually just texted him before the show to please come on. Let's talk about what he's done since then what he's doing and he also wrote a book um, for and with his daughter and I want to talk about that with him too but how much fun was that movie I oh, mean yeah. you know we I grew up in Bayside you went to Bayside High oh well, that was in our own backyard we did a lot of night filming as well and uh, we did a, a drag racing scene yes, where at the yes. end the car yeah, crashes yeah, and yeah. everything like that and uh, also my good friend Peter Gordio Peter Gordio. Who is in the movie. Yes, let's mention Peter. And I Peter also met Peter in the Bronx, Bronx Tale, Tale 30 movie. years ago. Well, right. Peter and I went to high school together, and his best friend actually lived on my block. Wow. And he was always on my block, so I saw Peter a lot growing up as a kid. And then when I did watch the movie A Bronx Tale, and... And Willie and Peter actually open up the movie. It's their first scene when the girls pull up in the car and they have they have their line. They throw their line, and I'm like, "That's Peter!" And I'm like, "Holy crap!" And he's had an amazing career too. Yeah, I had him yeah. on my show like five years ago. So Peter, if you want to come on, you're more than welcome to, yeah. and we'll catch up. Plus, he's a weightlifter. He's a body. He's yeah. always been a bodybuilder yeah. and and into health. He's in great shape. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Forget about it. Incredible. Yeah. So Gino Caffarelli. So Gino. Yeah. I hope Gino comes on my show. And Gino, then, Gino, I first met Gino yeah. in the Laugh, Kill a Laugh movie. Yes, yes. Uh, Kamal Ahmed production. Yes. And uh, we had some couple of good days of filming. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the trailer. It was amazing. Yeah. And uh, and then back to, we'll just end your, <clears throat> you know, we'll just end with uh, uh, Gravesend before we get into your music. But Gravesend is um, a series on Amazon Prime. Um, you can watch season one. I think there's only four episodes, right, in season one? Season one is four episodes. Right. I'm in episode one. Okay. And um, we left my, my scene open yes. for imagination. That's good. In the scene, I'm selling beer uh -huh. at the street festival uh -huh. for the mafia. Right. And it appears to some of the other wise guys that I'm selling my own beer on the sneak. Oh. And they immediately jump to conclusions. Okay, okay. But I'm not going to reveal what really happened. Mm. You're going to have to tune in and find out. Yes. Okay, so because a lot one. of my friends are asking, so what's going to happen to your character? Did you get the shit beat <laughs> out of you? Did you get another chance? Was there a reasonable explanation about right, why you right. had your own beer? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That was pretty risky what you were doing. Yeah. So people want to know. Right, right. Well, you're gonna have to watch yeah, for yourself watch and then if season, you want to see what happened and then to me. Season two, there's nine episodes. I'm in eight, and you have Chaz Pommel Terry, and you have Fran Drescher, and Andrew Dice Clay, and Dice Clay, Armand Asante. Armand. There's so many wonderful people in season two. Absolutely, there's, there's just so many, so we, many talented we, and people. And we have the number one guy. Ready for this? Go ahead. 
Chaz Palm and Terry. Yes. From a Chaz. Bronx tale. Yeah. How crazy is that that it comes full circle? Yeah. 30 and years we got later. My, and we got my buddy Vincent Pastor yes. from The Sopranos, Vinny. Mr. Big Pussy. Yes, yes. So, like, Amazing. a star studded cast. Yeah, it really is. Gravesend is coming on strong. Yeah. And um, season two made a huge hit. Season one reached the top of the charts mm -hmm. on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. It was viewed the most, and it was number one. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season two did the same thing. Yeah. So it was the number one in the charts for three, four weeks. So Amazing. Tune in. Tune and in. Support and support Greg. It. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about your music, because like I said, you're a great singer, a great performer. Thank um, you. Uh, Anthony was performing in Queens. There he is. There's you and the band and the guys. And he oh, said, yeah. come to BB's. Yeah. I'm going to be in Queens. And what a show. What a night. It was so much fun. Yes. I had a blast. Um, and thank you. I appreciate for you, you, uh, you know, know, showing gotta, up. You know, you got to support. Everyone's, yeah. you know, everyone's got to support each other. That's how we all get through everything, yeah. right? Now, how often do you gig out? Uh, well, you know, since the pandemic, it, it's yeah. been slow. And yeah. the whole entertainment industry basically it's shut changed, down. changed, yeah. So... But, uh, you know, I usually try to do, like, at least once or twice a month. Yeah. It depends on where I'm performing and right. how much they're paying. Because uh. a lot of the small venues, they don't want to pay too much. Right. And the thing that a lot of these owners of these venues don't realize, we have to have a rehearsal at a music studio. We pay for gasoline to get there. We spend three hours in the studio. Then we chip in $20 each. So $20 in gas, $20 for rehearsal space. Already each man is invested $40. Right. Then we got to get to the gig, invest another 20 in gas. So now each man has invested $60. Right. And then they try to insult our intelligence by offering us $500. That's $100 a man. Right, I know. So we have to break down, I know. set up, I know. three hour rehearsal, three hour show, each man is putting in eight to ten hours mm -hmm. because not only do we have a rehearsal in the studio, right. but we're all rehearsing at home. Oh, sure. Because we don't want to look like fools on the stage. No, I know. We I want know. our guests you, to come back. And you want to sound good. Now, yeah. do, you, do you actually play any instruments? or do you just... I could play instruments, okay. mostly to my own original material. Okay. Um, and that's where the writing came in, that you write original songs. Yes. Yes. And how's that going these days? Good, very good. Uh -huh. A lot of people in my audience, you know, they always, a lot of them scream out, let's hear some of your original stuff. And yeah, I'm like, that yeah. makes me feel good. Sure. You know? So I'll throw in a couple of originals. Usually do four or five cover songs mm -hmm. and then one original. Yeah, sneak it in. I do all my original stuff with my In Your Face band. Okay. And then I have my Anthony of Any All Star band. Okay. With some amazing musicians of mine. Um, Jim Moran is in that band. Mm -hmm. Ed the Hat on drums. Uh -huh. Michael Green. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then in my In Your Face band, I have some of my old crew from Queens, like uh, <laughs> Woodside, where I used to oh, have wow. my restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been jamming and playing out together for over 10 years. Now, I want to know how old were you when you put right. together your own band or were in a band? Wait, let me tell you this funny story. I was about five or six years old, could hardly speak English. Wow, because Italian was your first language, That's correct? right, yeah, Sicilian. And uh, me and my little cousin, we were both the same age. Oh, cute. And we asked our parents, it was about four or five o'clock in the evening, can we have ice cream, you know, in Italian, right? Because yeah, yeah. we couldn't even speak English ourselves. Right, yeah. And our parents said, you had ice cream for lunch. So me and my little cousin came up with a brilliant idea. Uh -huh. You know the old-fashioned broomsticks with the straw? Yes. So we, we both got our parents' brooms, and we went to the corner by where the train station was, and they had the old-fashioned newspaper stand, you yes. know, the wooden box? Yes. And the guy was already out of newspapers. Yeah. So me and my cousin got up on that little box, uh -huh. and we were singing oh. as soon as the people were coming off the train. For money. I want to hold your hand. <laughs> I want to hold your hand. Wow. And people were throwing us five cents, oh. ten cents, you know, back in the late oh, 60s. Oh, that was a lot of money yeah. back then, yeah. So sure. we went home with ice cream and a pocket full of change. Oh, how funny. And our parents were like, Dove prendere le sorte per prendere le gelato? Right. And we said, oh, Where'd we you were... get the money for that ice cream? Right. We were on the corner. We were playing music for money. Get out of here. What are you talking about? They that is great. Us. 
<laughs> until great. some of the neighbors told our parents, oh that's my God, great, your children are too much. That's a great story. So that's the first time I realized, hey, you know, singing, I like singing. Yeah. Then when I was like 13, 14, I started my own band. Mm -hmm. And it's been rock and roll and Is that what you listen to? That's what I was going to say. Does I that... love all music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From like the Drifters to Frank Sinatra. Yeah, because I know you sing a lot of yeah. Frank too. Yeah, I go to karaoke spots. Yeah. You know why I use karaoke to practice new songs sure and when total strangers come Why up not? to me and go hey anthony that was really good voice range for you yeah then i say that's a keeper right I write you it down add it to your repertoire and i add it and yep. i tell my band members hey learn these four or five songs right exactly. this way we keep it fresh exactly because you don't want you, you also want to play songs that other bands don't play that's because true, a lot too. of bands sweet caroline right. and the same same songs. Like, I love to hear a band do, like, one-hit wonders. Right. You know, like something that you don't hear all the time. Right. You know, that's really, really cool. All right, you know what? We're going to take my last break. And when we come back, we are going to continue talking with Anthony Avani. So don't go away, people. Back after this. Wonder Woman was everything to little girls, especially that look like me. She stands for being a voice for people that need a voice. My organization renovates homes for people with disabilities. And when I come home, a self-care routine makes me feel my best. I'm very proud of the difference that we're making and to see that impact in my community inspires me to work even harder for everyone around me. Doc, who's the best comedian you know? Teresa Farrell. And who's the best actress you know? Teresa Farrell. And who's the best cast member and best boy? Teresa Farrell. Who's got the best radio? Teresa Farrell. Doc, who's your favorite gimme? Teresa Farrell. Who are you loving right now? Teresa, <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Farrell. All right, Doc. I love you too, baby. Love you as always. Thank you. Welcome back to Tea Time. Tea Time can be seen live every Monday night at 8 o'clock right here on Facebook and YouTube. Then it goes to Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV, everywhere podcasts can be heard and seen every Saturday at 11 a.m. on Channel 20 for people on Long Island who get optimum cable vision. Cable, we're going to be on TV on Saturday. Wow. Isn't that fun? That's a lot to remember. <laughs> it is, but I do. <laughs> Just like you remember all your lines in for movies. This is true. Let me tell you something. I just shot something in Philly called Monster On. Shout out to Diana Carter and 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 Teddy and everybody there. And it was it was it was so much fun. And Michael and he was like, "Do you know your lines? Do you know your lines?" And I'm like, "Yes." And I was telling him my line, and he'd hug me. And then I tell him the next line, and he'd hug me. And then I tell him my third line, and he'd hug me. And he was like, "I'm so glad." You know. And it's like you look at you have to go on set prepare and don't tell me then he got on one knee and said will you marry me <laughs> no but let me just tell you something it is so important it is so important to know your lines you have to you have to show up prepared right that Absolutely. is like that is like 95 percent of and most importantly remember the q word that you have to deliver to your coast well that's the whole thing you know you know the writers write for a reason and they want you to to recite the words the right. way they wrote them. You know, a lot of people don't realize. They see actors, they watch that show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, but they never show how these people started on the street being an yeah, extra. Yeah. It's freezing cold outside. But like, for example, in the Cruise movie, yes. one night we had to make believe it was summertime. It was late November, freezing cold. Wow. And we had to stand on the street with short that's, pants and a t-shirt. And that's real acting, and baby. And make believe we were sweat. <laughs> Man, it's so hot out here. I got to go take a dip in the pool. Right. And meanwhile, it was 20 degrees. And we were like, ah. <laughs> right? It yeah. It's crazy. So totally that's what crazy. a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. And not only that. It's not just about remembering my lines. If I'm acting opposite of you, I have to study all your lines well, that, too. They know, well, that's the thing is, you know, acting is reacting. Correct. So you really have to pay attention to what the person is saying opposite you so you can react 
and answer them in a correct way that's going to make sense, obviously. Right. So, yeah, you have to know those those trigger words. That's why you need the Q word. You do. You do, you do, you do need Q words. And it also helps when you when you have a lot of good chemistry. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I know when you're finished talking. You know when I'm finished talking. Yeah. And that's how you could get excellent yeah. interchange yeah. into reactions. Now, do you like doing comedy or do you like doing more serious roles? Yeah, or? I love comedy. Yeah. I like to do comedy as I go along, too. <laughs> I make stuff up. Well, I know you do. You've written some stuff. And oh, I, yeah. we talked about the open mic here on a Friday night yeah, to come yeah. down and try out your material. Yeah, yeah. You know. Some of my material might not be suitable for Well, the this audience, audience but, you know. <laughs> Of a, the audience here on a Friday Sometimes night. Sometimes I get fresh. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So what comes first for you? The music, the melody, or the lyrics? Well, you know, it's amazing because when I write lyrics, I actually hear the music in my brain at the same time really? for some reason. And then... A lot of my musician friends say, wow, that's an amazing gift. It is, because it's usually one or the other. And But ironically, like, I could sing and strum the guitar or play the drums to my own music, mm -hmm. but I have a difficult time doing it to other people's music. Right. Strumming and singing. Yeah. I could play the bass guitar and play, sing Jimi Hendrix, Hey Joe. Some songs I could. Right. But it's very hard. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. But to my original stuff, I I, I, I have no problem doing it. It's <laughs> hey, crazy. Ralph Bracco's watching. Ralphie. How you doing, Ralph? We've been yeah. talking about you. Your ears must be ringing. Yeah. You're going to have to rewatch the show if you didn't join in oh, from the Ralph beginning. Oh, Ralph has been one of my co-stars in quite a few yes. projects, including Together With Us, yeah. the Benson yeah, House Boys. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, I just want, I want everyone, we have like five minutes, but I want everyone to know where to find you. So tell them where you are on Insta and uh, Facebook. Well, I could be reached uh, through Facebook. Anthony of any right and I'm Names also on the screen. I'm also on YouTube Anthony of any actor singer if you want to check out any of my uh, acting or music stuff yeah you there's can a always lot look there. me up on YouTube yeah, there's a lot yeah. there. and mm -hmm. on Instagram you're on Instagram as of any I don't really go on Instagram Anthony, that much it's, it's, because Facebook is already overwhelming. I know, enough. Like, I, know I... I know, I know. You can spend hours on your phone I like know. that. I know, social media. I yeah. know, it's like a whole thing within itself. I realize it's a good tool to put yourself out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But it's so, also so, like time consuming. So, you know, we spoke briefly about how, you know, you grew up speaking Italian. Your parents were born in Sicily. In yeah. Sicily. And, you know, um, Obviously, you spoke Italian before you spoke English. I sure did. That's you why know? I was always in trouble in school, because I never understood the teachers. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. I totally get it. But They um, told me, sit down. I said, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> All right. We won't say what that means, but we'll just move on real quick. Right on. Um, so what do you have coming up now? Do you have anything coming up or that you're working on that you can tell us about? Uh, well, I do have a few projects in okay. the works. Yeah. Um, I'm not really allowed to discuss them yet. All right. I and get it. I don't know how far they're going to go, okay. so I don't want to blow steam out there. I get it. I like to accomplish things, get them done, and know they're going to be seen. Right. Then right, I will advertise, right. you know, because I don't know I waste my time. Because breath. you know as well as I do, when you start out in this industry, you do shorts, you do a lot of indies, a lot of stuff. You do for free because, A, you want the experience. B, you really want to try to get your footage to make a reel. Right. And, you know, you, you, like, you, know, you have to get your feet wet somewhere. Right. So, you know, it's kind of like paying your dues. You well, know? you know what? Pretty soon we're getting ready to start season three of Gravesend. I heard. I that. remember seeing you on set last last season two. Yeah. I'm not sure. I was what at your the I was, I was at the strip club. Woo -hoo! Um, at, yeah, baby. I was at. The, I did not dance. I was not dancing. <laughs> sure. I was at the Fourth uh, of July block party. Right. And I was also in Jersey with Fran Drescher, filming filming with her, and she's a doll. Oh, so yeah. I'm looking forward to season three. I hope they do bring me back. We'll see. And uh, and I have to tell you, I, I 
We have like a minute and a half left. I have to tell you, I so appreciate you taking the ride from Queens and doing my show for me, because I know it was kind of like last minute, but I've always been wanting to get you on the show, and I'm glad that it did work out right. the way it did. And I appreciate the invitation. It's yeah. always a pleasure seeing you. Same As a matter here. Fact, I love you, my friend. The last time I saw you was completely by accident. We were at an outdoor venue seeing a rock and oh, roll band right. at the beach. Yes, we were. We were at And we had a grand old we time. We did, we did, <laughs> but we always do. That's we right. We always do. What I love about Anthony, he's just a pop positive person and he's Thank got you. a great heart Thank you. I appreciate and really that. you know because we're you know when, when you're brought up old school and all about respect and certain ways that we were brought up because I'm 100% Sicilian too right. so you know my parents my grandparents raised the same way you know what I mean and it, and it shows the respect level that you have emanates from your oh, body. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. You're a beautiful that. person. I appreciate that. I really and do. I, I wish you all the success oh, in the world. Oh, and, and you well. too, my friend. And, and I hope we get to work some, together. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to do oh, some acting definitely, together. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And yeah. um, I just want to end the show tonight um, by sending prayers um, to the Dallers, a Farmingdale High School band, as you know. They were on their way to Pennsylvania for band camp for the weekend. My niece, Victoria, was on one of those buses, and thank God she's okay. Two teachers passed away, and my prayers and condolences go to those two families. There are five kids who are in critical condition, still in critical condition, and I want everyone to pray for those kids, pray for the people that are in, still in the hospital. Uh, we're going to end the show with the Dallers up there. Uh, for a minute when I sign off. Uh, we're going to say goodnight. I want to thank you again, my friend, for doing this. I love you so much, and I can't wait to work with you. So for now, everybody, have a great week. Tell everyone you love you love them, and I'll see you next week. Ciao!